Hey everyone, welcome to the YoshiCast. Today, let's talk about blank comic book covers. Before I get started, I just want to let everybody know listening to the podcast that I'm now putting these up on YouTube. So if you'd rather watch me talk than listen to me talk, you can uh, find the link in my show notes. And if you're on YouTube and you'd rather listen to the podcast, well, you can go to YoshiCast.com and find it there pretty easy. So, blank comic book covers. Why are these a thing? Why am I interested in them? What do I want to talk to you about them? Well, you know, a big thanks goes out to Robin Hunt on Twitter, who's been prodding me to, to do this video series. Blank comic book covers have gotten really popular in recent years. They are essentially blank covers on a comic book. The, the covers are just a little bit thicker, the stock's a little bit heavier, and it's so that artists can draw a sketch on these comic books. This is really a big thing for people who want a unique piece of art by their favorite artist. They'll, they'll, buy, a, they'll buy a comic book, they'll buy their favorite comic book that has a, a blank cover on it and take it to a convention or mail it to the artist and the artist will sketch a design on it and send it back to them and it's signed and it's just it's one thing that the the fan has that's that's theirs that nobody else on the planet has and i think that's really cool so robin and i have been sharing our blank transformers comic book covers on twitter and the different artists we've had do sketches and designs on them and that's primarily what I collect. I collect Transformers uh, blank comic book covers, uh, pretty much just Regeneration 1, because that's uh, honoring the original Marvel Transformers run, and that's just really what I'm into, and so that's what I collect. I do have one or two offshoots. I've got a Rick and Morty blank cover, and I've got an X-Files blank cover, but pretty much I've got a couple of handfuls of blank Transformers Regeneration 1 covers that I've had artists do designs on, and I plan to share them with you in future episodes. So what I can tell from doing a little bit of research, the very first blank comic book cover that was ever produced came out from Image Comics in 2002, and this was for their He-Man comic book called Masters of the Universe. So this was the very first time a comic book company that I can find released a blank cover for artists to sketch on. and. You'd buy the comic book, you'd take it to a convention, or you'd mail it to an artist if you could find their contact information, give them a little bit of money, they'd sketch a design on it and send it back to you. That's pretty cool. The whole thing didn't really pick up, though, until about 2013, when the big comic book companies, Marvel and DC, started to, started to get on board. They, they started slowly, but they got on board. So now, when you go into a comic book store or you're searching on eBay, you can pretty much find a blank comic book cover for your favorite comic book. Punisher, Batman, all, all the big guys have them now. If they haven't come out, uh, they're going to come out. Usually, the big comic book companies try to make sure every name gets a blank cover once a year. A big thing that they're doing in comic books now is almost every issue has multiple covers. Depending on the, the comic book you're after and the company that produces it to, you could have two, three, four, five different covers each month, plus or minus that. Uh, and then every now and then you get, a, you get a, a blank cover. Blank covers have gotten so popular, it seems, that even artists are going out of their way to stockpile blank covers, making it harder for, for collectors and fans to go to a comic book store and, and buy these blank covers. But they're doing it so that when they're at a convention, and a lot of these guys travel the world every year going to conventions, they have a comic book that they can draw a cover, draw a picture on and, and sell. So it's just as valuable to the artist as it is to the fan. So yeah, since 2013, these have really gotten popular. Um, you know, I was just at Emerald City Comic Con and I saw these everywhere. And not only did I see booths selling them, but I saw fans getting artists to do sketches on them. You know, and when you're at a convention, uh, artists also supply their own paper and stuff, so you can get a sketch. It doesn't necessarily have to be on a comic book. So one of the things I'm hoping to share with you in future episodes is uh, not only the covers I've had sketched, but also what it was like, the whole process I went through to get that sketch, why I chose that particular sketch or that particular artist, and how the back and forth between me and the artist went just so you are more informed if this is something you want to get into. But generally, I, I generally take a, a blank comic book uh, with me to a convention, a convention that's got an artist that I'm interested in, and I walk up to him and I just politely say, hey, do you have time this convention to uh, do a sketch for me on my, on my cover? And they say, yeah, do you have an idea? And I'll, I'll spit out my idea and they'll say, okay, well, that, that'll be $150. And that's fine. I, I hand them the comic, I hand them the money and come back and 
a day or, or a couple of hours and they have the sketch done and it's beautiful and I, I have it on my collection and it's 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 great. It's, it's a great back and forth. So in future episodes, I'm going to show off some of my blank comic book covers that I've had sketched on and uh, what that experience was like working with uh, each artist, how much it cost, and uh, why you should, why I think you should come to a convention with an idea of what you want an artist to do on the comic book cover. Uh, to me, that's more memorable rather than just having you know an Optimus Prime head done on a comic or, or a Megatron head done on a comic, which you can do. It's totally fine, totally cool. You know, I, I have some of those too from my from my early goes at this, but. Uh, I think having a, a preconceived idea of what you want is is something memorable. I also think it kind of gives the artist something a little bit more to focus on. I think that uh, this is really useful and helpful information that I haven't really seen anywhere online, and I hope you all enjoy it. So I want to thank everybody for watching on YouTube and everyone listening on the podcast. Uh, as always, down below uh, in the show notes, you'll be able to find uh, my contact information. You can leave me a voicemail. You can uh, send me an email. You can tweet at me, whatever. Whatever works for you. Just get a hold of me. Let me know if you have any questions, any things I should talk about specifically. And until then, take it easy.